Hello and welcome again to Tech It Out. Today we are having the first part of the reviews of the BlackBerry Priv. I'm not going to do one great big long video with all the details in it. I thought I'd give you little chunks as we go along so that we can learn about the phone together. As you just saw, when I actually picked the Priv up from the desk here, it switched itself on. That's something that's done in the settings. You can actually do the motion settings so that when you lift the phone, it switches on. Normally, of course, you switch on on the side button. Looking at the phone itself, I'm really, truly impressed with the quality of it. The build quality, the feel of it in the hand, it sits in the hand really nice. It's not too wide unless you've got the case on, which you may want to look at my other video and have a look at that about the hard case. But without that hard case, it sits perfectly in the hand. Even if you've got quite small hands, I think it would still fit really well in the hand. And is quite confident actually to move about, unlike many other phones, where you would be worried about slipping out your hand constantly. You can actually move about the screen on this quite easily. The back is really nice and grippy, so everything just stays where it is. The buttons, the on-off button and the volume buttons are just in the right places. And when it does come to the keyboard, of course, the slide out. You usually use two hands, but you can use one hand if you want to quite easily. That's really good. So the overall design, the quality, the feel of the phone is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The camera is really quite good. It's not the best in class, as it were. Uh, but then again, I'm not a professional photographer. So a good camera is all I really need. It's good. Even in quite low light, it's quite good there with the dual flash, two-tone flash. The speakers on this for the earpiece is really loud, as I discovered by accident when I didn't realise I had it turned up full and took a phone call. And the lower speaker is really good as well. Again, not as good as some of the more high-end handsets. Particularly, I suppose, thinking of Sony, the Sony Z5 and the Z3 that I have even, and the HTC. This is a work phone. It is not a media centre type phone. This is something that really is for work and for play. Looking at the phone then, in general, I'm really impressed. Feel is really good. Open the keyboard. The balance is really good. No top heaviness or anything like that. And as you can see, it's really responsive. You press the button straight on. So if we go into the first screen, I've set this up with my Gadget Priest account now. You can actually set up more than one account on this. So I've actually got my main account separate from my Gadget Priest account. In this account, there are various things. Now, one thing I did notice when I set up this second account is the peak feature has disappeared. The peak feature is where you have the little slider on the side of the screen. You slide it across to get into the details of messages, emails, and so on. That I can't get at. I've been into the settings, I've looked where it should be, and it's not there. So I don't know why it's not there for a second account. I'll have to look into that a bit more in detail later on, perhaps. Perhaps you can only have it on one screen. That said, it's about the only feature that I really can't see a use for, because as you can see, notifications come up at the top of the screen and they are grouped into the various notifications. So if you have Facebook notifications, Twitter not notifications, email notifications, reminder notifications, they'll come up in separate little tabs. And if you've got a lot of them, it's handy really to have the separate tabs on the top of the screen to actually pare down into the various notifications so you can see what each of them are. It gets quite confusing sometimes because of course the notifications can run off the bottom of the screen. As you can see, as I'm moving about my fingers on the screen, I'm hardly touching it and it's actually doing things, so it's a really sensitive display. If we do go into the app drawer there, you'll be able to see that it's really, really snappy. The other thing I do like as well is the widgets are just there. And handy little shortcuts, composing emails and so on. Really, really useful stuff. So a lot of good things in here then. Now if we go into the settings menu, it's all the standard settings that you'll find with any Android handset really. And if I go to display, now this is where you'd normally find that peak feature that I was telling you about. And it would come in 
just between battery edge and font size, you'd have selection there to turn it on and off and to say which side you wanted it to go on. I've got my font set to huge because my eyes are not as good as they used to be, which is very handy and the font size is just about right. You can see the different features here of what you can turn on and off for when you're using the phone, the gestures and so forth. Another way, as you may have seen in that menu, to turn the phone on is to double tap it. Now, as I said before, you've got the notifications bar up there, but you've also got the black prehab. This is accessed from the bottom, and each of these widgets, or choice buttons here, can be customised, so you don't have to have what's actually here. You can customise them. This is the Universal Search, Google Now, and then the BlackBerry Hub. So again, using one hand, you don't have to go to the top of the screen, you just go to the Hub and all your notifications are there. Very good, again, makes life easier than trying to reach the top of the screen to drag it down to see what the notifications are and then selecting them, it's all here. So that's a really good feature as well, I really like that. Everything else really works quite well. To get into the camera, try the setup of the widget there, or you can set it up on one of those quick shortcuts. You can use the on-screen button. One of the other little things that is handy is to take a photograph, you can actually use the spacebar. And you take a photograph like that, so you don't have to touch the screen at all. If we go back in now and we'll go back and we'll try and find, let's see if we can find the notepad here. I'll just set this up. The on-screen keyboard is really good, as you'd expect. As you type, it gives you the choices to make. But the main point of having this, of course, is for the, for the hard keyboard. If I start typing here, let's try the traditional the and I haven't quite got it in the right place, have I? Additional notes, there we go, try again. The now as you can see as I'm typing, choices come up here. So if I go to the next one, the quick swipe up there and then brown swipe up there and you can get quite fast at this jumped is on this side this time so you swipe this side now there is one thing I'm not too sure about on this, and I'll come back to it a little later when I come to the, the cons, as it were. For now, you know, it's really good. I really like this keyboard. It's quite small, but even with my quite big fingers, it's quite accurate and quite easy to get at. And once you get used to swiping up, when you've typed one or two or three letters in, it is really quick as well. As quick, I would say, as, well, almost as quick as the swipe keyboard. Now on here as well, I don't know if you noticed there, but there is something called DTEC. Now this checks the security of your device. So as you can see, mine is in the yellow there, it's not absolutely secure, so it actually tells you why. Remote management is not switched on, that means the Find My Phone feature that Google has. If your phone gets stolen or lost, you can have it wiped or you can actually find out where it is. And then you have the screen lock. I haven't set the screen lock. This is just for testing purposes. And encryption. I haven't fully encrypted the phone yet, although it is partially encrypted. Reset protection. You put a password on that, but the rest of it is all green, as you see. If you know messaging and BBM, you will know anyway. A universal messaging client, which is very secure and is used by literally thousands of people in all walks of life, especially those in jobs where security and privacy is very important. The other features of the phone that are, are very useful, 
Well, it, there's quite a lot, actually. One thing that really is nice, I like, it's like, almost like a peak feature that I think it's the iPhone 6 has it now. They have pressure sensitive way of doing it, but on BlackBerry it's even easier. So you just swipe up on the icon and it brings up the widget. And then you just dismiss the widget. This handy little feature. You can have the icons on the desktop and then you can just swipe up and you can get to the widgets. You can, of course, add extra screens. You press and hold as well, and you can add the various things, widgets, shortcuts. And that's some of the good points. So now onto a few of the cons of the phone. <laughs> I know it's an aesthetic thing, but I don't really like this. I, I find it a shame, really, they couldn't have just painted this the same colour as the rest of it, so it doesn't look really odd when it's slid out. But that really is an aesthetics thing. It does. No, I don't think I've heard anybody mention that, so it's probably just me. To clear the screen, you can clear individual apps by swiping, of course. But to clear them all, you've then got to go to the right to the top of the screen to press the clear all. Now, if that was down towards the bottom, then you wouldn't really have to stretch your fingers up all the way to the top all the time just to get to it. Another thing, I'll go back to the pros, I think. You can actually use the keyboard, as I've shown you in a previous video, as a trackpad, which is really nice. And if you've got something on the screen, you can actually go to a particular part of the screen. So if I go back into Notes, again, I'm pressing the buttons there, so sensitive. If we go to that note that I was in earlier, now if I remember rightly you press a double press. Hmm, maybe it's not working for me. Ah, now it's come up. You can actually use it to navigate and if you press the shift button you can choose words. Now, one of the things I was mentioning about the keyboard that I found a bit strange or a bit awkward, really, is when you type in numbers in. Now, you can get to the on screen keyboard, and I'll come to that in a moment, but to type numbers in on the mechanical keyboard, you press the Alt and then the number. So if you're starting with the number 0, Alt 0. But that doesn't keep it, of course, so when you go to press 1, you've got a W. So to be able to press more than one number in a series, if you're typing a telephone number or an address, perhaps, you have to press the Alt twice. And then you can type 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then you have to press the Alt to get back out of it again. Now what I find awkward about this, and again it's probably just me, but if I'm trying to type a number and it starts with say three zeros, I have to press Alt twice, three zeros, Alt. So I'm pressing six buttons to type three zeros. Now you might think, well, use the on-screen keyboard. Very well, you can swipe down and the on-screen keyboard will come up. And it doesn't come into the numbers. It comes into the symbols first. The numbers are not on this side. So you have to swipe down again to get to the numbers. But now you've got to the numbers, there's no zero on that screen. So again, you still have to go back to the alt and the zero to be able to type zeros. Very frustrating. The other thing as well, I don't know if you noticed, but if I'm typing a web address, type it in, press down to get to the at symbol, and it's not there. You have to swipe down a second time to get to the app symbol. Now there's probably a shortcut here somewhere that I don't know about, but there's nothing to show me on the screen where the at symbol is. So I'm a little confused about that as well. The only other thing I would say at the moment is what I ended the last video with. 
So I ended the last video with a little teaser. I had bought a wireless charging dock for the Priv after actually phoning BlackBerry and checking with their support team that it supported wireless charging and being assured that it definitely did. I went out and bought the dock and well, here goes. Nothing. It doesn't support wireless charging in the UK. So that's a biggie for me. It's one of the big points. The keyboard and the wireless charging were the two big points that I really wanted this phone for. And just to assure you that this definitely doesn't support wireless charging, apart from the fact that I phoned up their support technicians again. If you go into about phone and you look down to model number, the model number for the UK model STV 100-4. The wireless charging equipped version is STV 100-1. If you've got anything apart from 100-1, you don't have the wireless charging. So I'm a little upset about that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, whether I like the phone enough to keep it, or uh, wait to see what BlackBerry are going to do about it, because at the end of the day, they actually advised me that it did support the wireless charging. But it does fit on the dock quite nicely. And it does stay there when I put it on properly. If I suppose we could get the part to put in it to equip the wireless charging. But I don't think so. So it may be I'll be looking at something else in the near future. But for now, thank you for watching.